Today on Mr. Tessalonian, I've got a great show for you guys. We're starting out a major project. This project's so big that it's going to take me more than a month working almost every day just to design the parts for this project on CAD and probably another three months just to print all the parts out. I'll tell you guys more about the project here in two weeks once we get it going, but for right now I just want to start out by first of all giving a huge shout out to Creality, your marketing team and your customer service team absolutely incredible people. They saw the value in the project, they jumped right on board, and they were a real pleasure to work with. So I can tell you guys, if you want a company that gets right back to you, talks to you about what you're doing, and really cares about the machines and the projects that, that the 3D printing world is working on, get out there and contact Creality because they're a great company. So to get started here today, guys, Creality has provided me the all new Creality K1C. So I thought I'd go ahead and do an unboxing and setup video today. We'll do a print on the machine. And then afterwards, I'll give you guys my final thoughts and what I thought about the print quality and how fast it prints and the overall quality of the machine itself. So let's get going on today's show and start unboxing this Creality K1C. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's go ahead and use the old razor blade here. We'll cut the tape on the side. Cut the tape on the side and we'll go down here through the center and cut that tape there. All right guys, so I backed up the camera a little bit. We've already cut the tape on the top of the box for you, so let's go ahead and open that up and we'll take a look on the inside. All right, so starting out with the first thing that you see here is there's directions on the top of this on how to unpack the machine and get it set up. That's great, that gives you something to reference right when you open up the box. You go ahead and set down the razor we just used to open it. Let's pull out some of these nice corner protectors. We'll set those over to the side. Once we get the machine out of the box, we're going to set it up on a table so you guys can get a better look at it. It's just a lot easier for me to do the unpacking here down on the floor. All right, so let me go ahead and open up the top there and give you guys a look at the directions. That tells you how to unbox and set it all up. We'll keep that right here to the side so we can reference that as we're going. Uh, the next piece I see in here looks like the lid and we have the instruction book and the Creality instruction guide it says. So there you go right there on top and look at that they even gave us some stickers we can put on it that's awesome set that over to the side and here we go we've got the Creality K1C lid it's got a nice shrink wrap over it so let's go ahead and rip off the shrink wrap here as we're going and we'll set that off to the side hopefully I can keep this down in the shop for you guys the whole time look at that that's a nice looking lid we'll set that over to the side right now throw the trash down on the floor all right, next step here, let's uh, go ahead and pull these two pieces out. A couple corner protectors for the machine itself. And right here we have the machine. All right, so it looks like right now the next step here is to grab the sides of this bag. Hopefully I can do this and pull the machine up out of the box itself. Look at that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and slide the box out of the way. Give me a moment here to get that out of the shop. All right, so I've got the box out of the way. It's probably still going to be easier to get the bag off of this while it's down here on the floor. So let me reach in and pull out the machine from the bag. All right, let's kick the bag out of the way and we'll set the machine down. So there you guys go. You can see we've got some tape holding the door closed. We've got a nice chunk of foam up here. Oh, it looks like there's a little opening spot here on the top of that foam. And inside what we see is we've got our power cord. Uh, some odds and end pieces and that looks like some form of filtering system so we'll have to take a look at the directions as we're setting this up to see what each one of these go to let's go ahead and set those to the side all right so according to the directions here all right so I grabbed the unpacking directions real quick just to see what we're supposed to do next it says that we are supposed to Move the chain to one side in the direction indicated by the arrow and finally take the gray foam out as shown. All right, so it says we're going to move this little chain away from the foam. We're going to remove this chunk of foam right there. Let's throw that over to the side. Uh, Creality says next what we're going to want to do is push the extruder in the direction indicated, which is towards the uh, front of the machine and then remove the foam that's behind it. So we're going to go ahead and push the extruder forward just like this. And you can see this chunk of foam that comes out right there. We're going to throw that over to the side as well. Okay, so the next direction says pull the extruder back again. 
reach down inside and pull this box right here out of the machine. This has got some kind of parts in there. I can feel it's got some weight to it. And the next part says right here is to pull the piece of foam that's at the bottom of the machine out, which we'll do here in a moment once I get it up on a table. So let's go ahead and set this box aside. I'll pull a table into the shot here. We'll set the machine up on there and we'll finish this unpacking process. All right guys, so we've got the K1C up here on the table ready to go so we can finish the unboxing process. The next step of this is to open up the front of the door and get this piece of foam that's in here on top of the build plate out. And we're gonna do that here in a moment. First of all, we're gonna have to remove some of the tape and the protective covering that they put on the door. I do remember watching some of the original uh, makers videos where they were showing that the door had showed up a little bit busted up. So I can see why they've put this big piece of reinforced tape here on the front of the door just to make sure that it doesn't get damaged in shipping, which is really nice of Creality to do. Let's go ahead and just remove these pieces here and we'll get this opened up. All right, a couple little odds and ends strings stuck there. We'll remove that protective cover with it. Okay, so we've got the protective cover and the tape off the front of the door. It says the next part of this is to go ahead and reach in. Let's go ahead and open the door up. So there's some of the parts I saw on the top right here are gonna be the knob for the door. You can see the two holes right there. We're gonna install that here in a moment. Let's go ahead and reach in and we'll pull this piece of foam out of there. Just like that. Uh, I don't see anything on the piece of foam. So we can toss that to the side. All right, so here's our first look inside the Creality K1C. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you guys a little bit so you can see what we're doing in there. There you go. We've got another piece of protective tape right down here at the bottom, and there appears to be some form of uh, probably the screen connector wire that comes out of the bottom there. So we're gonna have to go in and see where that screen is, and we'll pull that out and we'll connect it here to the front. All right, so the next step of this is we're gonna have to get into the box that was inside the machine here. Let's go ahead and Carefully, I don't know what side is up. Okay, it's this side. We'll open up this box. We can take a look inside of there. Ooh, right away, I see the screen right here at the top. We'll pull that out and we'll set that right here. Uh, below that, you've got your spool holder ready to go. We'll set that off to the side. And we have one more box in here. And underneath that box is a little spool of Creality's white PLA. We'll set that to the side and we'll probably use that to do our first primary print. All right, so we've grabbed the little box that was in there. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we've got in there. All right, so this is going to be the tool kit. We've got our nozzle cleaning rod right here. They give us a glue stick, which is always nice. Um, right here we have, looks like the, that's our cutters. So they give us a set of cutters, which I'll show you guys here in a moment. And it looks like we've got a scraper in there, a wrench. Probably some grease for the machine. Yes, it says metal grease on there. And a USB stick, which we're definitely gonna need because that's gonna have the startup program and a first test print on it. So let's go ahead and set that down to the side right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set the wrench and the scraper back into the box. Inside of this bag with some of the tools, I do notice there's a couple screws in there. We do have some uh, little clip connects here for the Bowden tube. We're gonna go ahead and set that down. I have a feeling we're gonna need those. And there's a little bag down here with uh, some M3 by 15 screws. We're probably gonna need those. So we're gonna set those down right here in front. I think the rest of what's in here is good to go. We can set that box down for now. We'll go on to the rest of this. All right, so let's go ahead and start out by opening up our screen over here. I'm gonna pull that out. All right, it's got a protective cover on it. Let me go ahead and show you guys the screen here. So it's got some directions written on it. It says, before applying power, please check to the input voltage is 230 volt or 115 volt, depending on what you need. Uh, before applying power, please check that the three platform board fixing screws have been removed to avoid damaging the machine. So there are three screws here and I can see the arrows inside of the machine, one right here, one right here, and one right over here that we're gonna need to remove to let the build plate so they can move we definitely want to do that first, but before we do that, let's go ahead and attach our screen here. All right, so that was pretty easy to push into place. Just give it a nice push down. You can see the two little clips right here on the back of the screen. Those clip into two slots right there on the machine itself. I'm going to go ahead and just push those down into place. 
Feels like that's there and ready to go. The next step of this is we're gonna have to remove those three screws and it looks like they're an Allen wrench screw. So we're gonna grab our bag of tools. We figure out which one of these Allen wrenches that it gives us is actually gonna fit the screws here. Oh, looks like it's a different one than that. Okay, so that's the right Allen wrench. So give me just a moment here and we'll undo these three screws. We'll be able to use the bed then. All right, so there's screw number one. We'll go back here into the back and then do screw number two. All right, so there's screw number two. And then over here on my side, we have screw number three. So there's screw number three. You can pull that out of there. Okay, so on the build plate itself, it says, please tear off the surface protective layer before use. It also says, before applying power, please check that the three platform board fixing screws have been removed. So we just did that. Let's go ahead and remove the protective film from the build plate. All right, so now that we've got that all done and the screws are out, we're gonna to need to walk over to the other side of the machine. Right down here towards the bottom, about dead center in the machine, there's a little hole that you can see that goes in. Inside of that hole, and it's pretty far back in there, is the selector switch for your voltage. And I'm gonna need a flashlight to actually look inside of there to see what it's set at. It is set at 230 volt, and we're gonna need 115, so let's go ahead and switch that over to 115. Make sure you do that before you plug in and turn on your machine. So there we go, we now have our voltage selection correct. We're ready to go on that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the directions and see what's next. What we need to do next here is we're gonna install the filter system on the back of the machine. Let's go ahead and open that up. Give you guys a quick look at that. So there you go. And that goes right here in the very back of the machine. So give me just a moment to line this up and press that into place. There we go, we've now got our filter on the machine. Uh, the next step is we're gonna need to screw the little door handle here onto the door. And the doorknob itself was up in the top compartment there in the foam, part of the piece that came out with the filter. So we can open up the bag and we pull that out. There's the door handle itself. Inside of that bag you'll find the mounting metal plate there for it and a couple screws to put it on. So let's go ahead and open up this bag and we should have the screws and the little tabs that go into the glass. So it's got some little fitting tabs. Go ahead and show you guys these. So those go right here in the holes in the door. You can see right here at the tip of my finger those two holes. Um, let me just make sure I've got them on the right side. Okay, it shows that those come in on the other side of the metal plate. So in there you got a little metal plate, it looks just like this. You're gonna put those little tabs into the holes, into the metal plate, and there's two of them. Let's go ahead and do that here in front of the camera for you. So there you go, you got the two little tabs in there. We're gonna go ahead then and push that into the door, just like this. And then we're gonna come around and we're gonna put the door handle up like that and put the two screws in from the back and that should be good to go. So I got the Allen wrench we're gonna need. It's one of the smaller ones in the bag. Let's go ahead and hold the back of that and we'll sit the door handle on there very carefully come up and start twisting these screws in so we can have our door handle. All right, so I've got both of those screws just snugged down the way they should be. We should be able to close the door now. We've got our handle ready to go. Let's go ahead and remove our protective cover from the screen so we can see what we're doing on there. Um, one of the things we haven't done yet was we haven't put our spool holder in. There's a hole here in the back that just allows you to twist that into place. So we're gonna go ahead and take our spool holder Twist that into place, it's ready to go. I can bring you guys around to the back of the machine here in a moment and show you what that looks like. So one last piece here is we gotta get the lid on there and there's this piece of double-sided foam tape that's inside the carrier box that has your glue stick and your scraper and all that in there. So let's go ahead and grab that double-sided tape out over here. Let's take a look at it. All right, pretty simple stuff. Got the pull away on this side. And it says what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna stick that on the side of the machine. So it shows the front piece here with the cutout. There's a little cutout in the front lip right here in the lid. And it shows this piece of double-sided tape going over here on this side right here. So we're gonna go ahead and peel that off and set that into that side. Give me just a second, see if I can do this while I'm talking to you guys. All right, we'll get that double-sided pulled away. All 
And there we go. Stuck here into place, just like it says. All right, so just a quick press down to make sure it's good and in place. Now you see the little cutout here in the lid. That's gonna go back to where you see your Bowden tube come into the machine up here at the top. I'll give you guys a better look at this here in a moment. So the cutout goes in the back. Should be able to stick the lid right into place. There we go, guys. We now have the full machine set up and ready to go. And according to the directions, the next step of this is to plug in the machine and let's go ahead and turn it on. So here we go, let's plug it in. All right, so I've plugged the machine into our handy power strip. So here we go, we're going through the fire up process. Let's see what the directions say to do after this. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the fire up process here. It says, which language would we like to use? Let's go ahead and hit English and next. Remove the screws A, B, and C according to this. So we've already done that. We can go next. Uh, welcome to Creality. Please keep the blue cube in the diagram. Clear of debris and click OK. OK. I have read. OK, so we got a privacy policy. We're going to go ahead and click that and hit next. Please set up your network. We're going to go ahead and skip that for now. That's something I'll do later. All right, so the next step of this is asking me for my time zone. So uh, I'm in Branson, Missouri. So right now it is central, I believe, right there. We'll hit next. Uh, please scan the code to bind your device to the Creality Cloud. We'll stick with the international on that. We'll go next. The next part of this, it says the self-check. Welcome to the self-check process. Uh, first thing here, it says, please place the printing platform. The self-check process is expected to take around 11 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and hit that, and I'll see you guys in 11 minutes. So the self-check is done. Let's go ahead and walk up to the machine and look at some of the attributes the machine has on the inside. First of all, I've noticed something here. This is a pretty neat chart I've never seen on any machine before. It gives you a list of materials over here on the side from Hyper PLA to TPUs all the way down to PC materials. Then it gives you the nozzle temperature for those materials. It gives you the hotbed temperature, the print speeds, the max volume metric speed, the model fan speed, and the side fan speed. So you have some kind of reference point to use. When you're setting up your prints on your slicer, you can come through here and use this as a reference chart so you have kind of a better idea what to set the machine at. I think that's pretty neat. Let's go ahead and look at the build volume of the machine. It says the build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters cubed. Up here in the top corner, I noticed that there's a nice little camera up here, which I love that feature, having a camera in there to monitor your prints. We have a nice removable build plate here. And this is not a textured build plate. It's definitely a smooth build plate. And at the back of it, I noticed when it was going through its startup program, it used this little wiping piece right here to actually wipe the nozzle. So it's got a little bit of a nozzle cleaning piece right here at the very back of the build plate. That's a neat feature to the machine. You see our side cooling fan, the model fan. You can see the back fan in there for chamber heat. And you can see the tool head fan right there. Pretty simple, nice setup. Looks like it's very, very sturdy. So the next part of this, let's go ahead and set the camera back up and we'll start out our first print. All right guys, so we're getting ready for our first print on the Creality K1C. I've got the roll of filament that came with the machine. We've got the little clipper tool that they gave us with it. We're going to have to set up some of the options here once we get this in there to get this ready to go. But first of all, let's go ahead and feed this into the back of the machine. What you're going to want to do is pull the starting point of that filament out of the little holes in the side of the filament reel there. And you're going to want to cut that with your cutting tool down to a 45 degree angle. So real quickly here, we're going to take the end of this and cut that off at a 45 degree angle. You're not going to need that cutting tool anymore, so let's go ahead and set that down. We'll come up to the back of the machine and we're going to feed that Creality's white PLA up into the filament sensor and all the way through until we get it up to the print head. Alright, so we've got the material fed all the way up into the print head. Let's go ahead and tap the screen so the screen comes up. We'll go down here to the second thing down on there, which is your print head options. 
and your temperature options and all that, let's go ahead and go to the actual print head and we're going to say we want the nozzle temperature at 220 degrees and hit OK. Alright guys, so the nozzle temperature has got to the 220 degrees temperature. That only took about maybe 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. Very, very fast. At the top of the screen you see extrude or retract. We're going to want to go ahead and extrude some of this and we're going to hit the extrude right there. And it says it should be extruding. So it's heating the nozzle and then it's going to go ahead and extrude out that and then it's going to tell us when it's done. So give that just a moment. Alright, so I can see the material inside it. Let's go ahead and open the door. You can see some of the material feeding out of the end of the nozzle right now. Alright, so it's done extruding the material. We now have the Creality PLA inside the machine's hot end. Let's go ahead and pull out that little piece. We're ready to go there. Now that we've got that part done, we've got our filament loaded into the hot end. We're going to grab the SD card that came with the machine. We're going to go ahead and turn back on the screen here. We're going to put that into the port right there at the front of the machine and it should give us the options. Alright, so it's going to be the third button down. We're going to tap that and it gives us four things that we can print now for the machine that came on the SD card. And of course, we're going to go ahead and print the Benchy out. Go ahead and hit the Benchy and it looks like we just hit print. Alright, so here we go. Let's see how long this takes to print a Benchy out and how well it does to print that Benchy. We could hear the uh, main fan turn on there. That's the actual chamber cooling fan. It's a big fan over here on the right. All right, it looks like it went through an entire leveling process on this for this 3D Benchy, and I'm sure that's just part of the programming that Creality put on the USB drive for this Benchy, something that you could probably change in the slicer. So they just did that whole input shaping and a bed leveling, and it should start printing here any second. All right, so it just home to begin the print. It's heating the nozzle up right now to 220 degrees. It says now that the print time for this Benchy is going to be 16 minutes, which is an awfully fast Benchy. I'm really looking forward to seeing just how well this Benchy turns out. We'll go ahead and give you guys a camera look at it a few times throughout the print process. That way you can kind of see the levels of it as it's going. And at the end, we'll take a good look at the Benchy and see how well it turned out. Alright, so it's doing a quick little primary uh, line down the side, and here we go, guys. Alright, so let me go ahead and move the camera up a little closer now that it's starting to print. Give me a second to get that zoomed in for you so you can get a good look at it. So there you go guys, there's our very first print on the Creality K1C. Wow, it is just flying. Look how fast that print head is going. Now one of the things about these high speed printers that you're going to learn when you have one of them is they require an extremely solid table. The speeds in which they print and the vibrations they create is something you can't put on a lightweight table or a table that has any vibration to it. You're definitely going to want to either put these on the ground themselves or build a really, really solid all wood table for these. Wow guys, look how fast that bench is printing. That's amazing. That's a fast printer. Alright guys, so we're just a few minutes in, you can see just how much of that Benchy's been printed. 
All right, guys, we're just about done with the print. You can see it's printing the last of the smokestack right now. And I think that's probably the slowest the machines moved this entire time is right here with the smokestack. The rest of it has just been flying along. All right, this should be it. There you go. We have now finished our 3D printed Benchy. Let's go ahead and take a look. Zoom out a little bit there. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and grab our Benchy once it cools down. We'll take a look at it and see how good it looks. We've given it a few moments here to cool down a bit. Let's go ahead and lift up the build plate. We'll bring it out here to show you the Benchy. Bring that up there. Let's go ahead and crack that off the build plate. Nice and easy to do. I love that. Slide that back into place. And let's go ahead and take a look here, guys. Look at that. I have to tell you guys, it looks absolutely perfect. I don't see any flaws in that Benchy anywhere, actually. The front edge is really, really clean. You don't see any overhang issues right there where the window is. The arc here at the side is nice and clean. The back of the boat looks nice and clean. Look at that, guys. That is a clean Benchy. Even the back window turned out nice and clean. The smokestack is absolutely perfect. I don't see any issues whatsoever with that Benchy. And in fact, Look at that. If you look inside the window there, you can actually see the steering wheel nice and clear inside of there. There's something you never see on a Benchy. I think Creality did a good job with this Core XY machine. It's a very, very fast printer. In fact, I think it's probably the fastest printer we have now at the shop. And it obviously produces an extremely good quality print. I'm not sure I've ever had a Benchy turn out that nice, especially not printed at that kind of velocity. Wow, guys, that's just great. So this is definitely the kind of machine you're going to want to have for your 3D print farm when it comes to printing quality, fast parts. I hope you enjoyed our unboxing and setup and the first print from our Creality K1C from the quality of the print that I can see here and the speed in which it printed this little Benchy. This printer is going to do a good job on our next big project. And let me tell you guys, the project that we've got coming up, having that kind of print quality with those kinds of speeds is going to make a huge difference to how long this project is going to take to print. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Teslonian and the Creality K1C.